was born, I didn't know anything about bees, didn't ever think I'd ever do anything with bees, didn't know about bees until about 20 some odd years ago. And I was introduced to bees when I had this in a tree in my backyard. I had this in a tree in my backyard. This is called a swarm. And a swarm is where bees reproduce to make a new family. And inside of this swarm is either one queen or multiple queens. If there are multiple queens and I can find them, I'm gonna separate them. And I'm gonna put them in different little hives and make more queens and make more bees. You can stick, 99.9% .9 of the time, you can stick your hand through this ball of bees and they won't sting you. There's that one time where you have rogue bees that they will, one of them will sting you. If you see a swarm, tell your parents, stay away from them. Tell your parents to call the animal control or either a beekeeper or somebody, a parent, adult, somebody. Get somebody to come out and take care of this. If you don't take care of this swarm, it'll move into the um, teacher's garage in the wall and build, set up a house or hive colony. In about two weeks, this swarm, two or three weeks, this swarm can do this. Once, once it's a colony and once it's living in a structure, it is no longer a swarm. It is a colony. They will defend their house. If anything messes with the hive, the colony right here, they will defend it. You can pass this, look at it and pass it down. Um, this is a baby bee nursery right here. And this is new wax. Wax turns brown with time. You're looking, this picture right here, if you cut it sideways, this is what it'll look like. This is a baby bee nursery with all the stages of development. This right here is an egg. This is what all bees come from. The egg, they're an egg for three days, then they change to a larva, and then they change to a pupa. Different stages, there's three bees in the hunt colony. There's a queen, there's workers, and there's drones. All of them start out as an egg. The queen is a female bee that's mated or has the ability to be mated. The drone is the male bee and that's all he's going to ever be is a drone. The workers are all female. The bee movie got it wrong. Walt Disney didn't call me to see, if, see, if I, see what opinions and learn about bees. This is a beekeeper and he's using a hive tool. I have many hive tools. This is my favorite one right here. This is my second favorite, and then I have others. The reason I like this one is because I can hold it in my hand and do stuff. And I can, and it doesn't get in the way. And it does everything that one will do. Um, the beekeeper is wearing a veil. Sometimes I wear a veil. If you're ever around bees, wear a veil. Uh, if you get stung in the eye, there's 50% chance of going blind. Uh, the smoker, this beekeeper is looking for the queen, looking for diseases and doing an inspection. And he's got a smoker there. This is a, one a kind of smoker you can buy. I actually don't like it and only use it for presentations or emergencies because of the way it's designed. Um, I like pine combs for smoker fuel and pine needles. And it has a bellows on it. The beekeeper is looking for the queen. And here's a frame with a queen on it. This is the queen. In beekeeping, you have to know a lot about science, uh, math. You have to be able to communicate to tell somebody about that swarm and what it can do. When they swarm, before they swarm, they make a queen. The bees are, this is two queen cells right here. This one they cut open so you can see. This is royal jelly. They sell it in the uh, natural food section of the stores because it's supposed to be good for you. 
The first queen that emerges will kill the other one. Most of the time you can only have one queen in the colony. The inspector came out to my house years ago, uh, a few years ago, to inspect my bees so that I could sell queens. And I had a nook sitting there that had like six stories. This is a nook. It's five frames of bees in a box. But they make kinds like this. This is also a nook. They make kinds like that you can stack. And I had five of them stacked up. And she was inspecting my bees, and she would come across a white queen. And she'd go, Paul, here's the queen. Uh, didn't you say it was blue? And I'm like, yeah, I thought so. So she'd come across, here's a yellow one. And there was like five different colors of queens in there. And she was like, you're setting me up. I said, no, I don't have time to set you up. But uh, anyway, this is a nook. And I can sell a nook of bees for, this nook of bees for $165 to $185 if it's full of bees. It's a cardboard box. Y'all can pass it around. It's basically a piece of folded cardboard with five frames of bees in it and a queen. Um, my beekeeper went around. To make uh, queens, you can, Kate, there's different ways to do it. One way is to graft a queen, a, a larva out of, a, out of the honeycomb and put it in here in these cups. They graft out of the comb and put the larva in here. Then you put this frame in a colony that doesn't have a queen and they draw queens off of it. Once they draw queens off of it, a queen emerges on the 16th day depending on weather. Let me pass this around. A queen emerges on the 16th. You have to know your calendar. If you graft it on a certain day, then the bee is going to emerge on a certain day. You can't have a birthday party that day. You can't go on vacation that day because the first queen that emerges out of here will do what? The first one that emerges will kill the rest. All the work you did grafting and separating bees, you'll only get one queen. If you do it right, pay attention to your calendar, separate these on day 14, there's 10 cells there. I can sell a queen any day of the week for $30 to $45, depending on who it is, what queen it is. If I sell them for $30 a piece and I have two, 10 queens, if this is $30, if this one right here is $30 and I have 10 of them, how much can I sell? Yes, $300. That's money. That's iTunes card. That's a new cell phone. That's the new speaker, the new fancy headphones for your iPad or whatever. Or oh, what? Yeah. Um, this, since I'm an old guy, can't see, can't do the grafting thing, this is a Nakote queen rearing system. You cage the queen underneath here. She lays an egg and all the little brown cells. And then you chain, you transfer the, the cell to a special bar, which I don't have one for some reason. Uh, but then you put them in a frame like that and they make queens. I don't have the dexterity to do the grafting thing. You can't make queens unless you have drones. Drones are male bees. They have big eyes. Um, they don't have a stinger. Um, all the people in the go, go center play with drones every now and then most of the time. Uh, I mark the drones different colors, let the kids mark drones different colors. Um, if I'm at a presentation, I'll put drones up in my veil and walk around doing a presentation. I didn't catch any yesterday to do that. Um, I had too many things going on. Um, I've had my eight-year-old son walking around Miller Park with eight drones in his veil while we were doing bee presentations. And a 40-year-old lady goes, ah, he's going to get stung. And he sits there and tells her they're drones, they don't have stingers. And he was about eight years old. Um, and she didn't believe him. Um, drones can't feed themselves. Um, the workers have to take care of the drones. In the wintertime, the workers actually kick the drones out. And then in the springtime, they remake them. I usually write down the day that I see the first drone emerging for the year and I wrote it down somewhere but I don't remember where it was. So if I have 110 queens, the potential to make 110 queens at $30 a piece.
No, not you. Put your hand down. You answer. Thirty dollars a piece, one hundred and ten. It's a math problem. I'll go with your answer. All of them. They're not going to be. You're not going to make a hundred percent queens. Um, I mean, unless unless every, everything falls into place. But if you make ninety of them, twenty-seven hundred. Did I do the math right? Um, Anyway, I sell honey. Um, oh, I can also sell wax. I can probably get about fifteen dollars for this. And once the wax, once the bees make the cone, and I, I pull the cone, get the honey out of it or whatever, I can melt the wax down with a solar wax melter, and this is what I get. This looks layered and stuff. That's because it wasn't melted at one time. I need a hot day, about 85 to 90 degrees, to really melt it and make it look good. Uh, the sun actually bleaches it. Uh, the sun actually bleaches it. The more times I run it through the solar wax melter, the better it looks. Uh, this is natural cone, and it's, they're dried out, but there's an egg in that one right there. there there's eggs down in the cells, but they're dried out. Hmm? Um, once I make a queen and I want to introduce her to a colony, I can put her in an introduction cage, which is this cage. This is a queen's, uh, queen's cage. They make different kinds of queen's cages. No, uh, I don't see the one, other one. Um, I don't see the other one. Anyway, this is an introduction. The queen will run back and forth here. The bees will go up and feed her and everything. And you can either, you can release her. And that's the only way with this one. But she'll run back and forth. This is an unmanaged queen unmarked and on old wax. Unmanaged, unmarked, old wax. The wax is brown. This wax is probably eight years old or so. This is a managed queen and she's painted red. Her wing has been clipped and she is on new wax and she's laying an egg. The color code for queen rearing, I can't remember numbers. I can't remember numbers and colors. So this is my cheat sheet for presentations. She's red, right, red? Yeah, she's red. So she was either made in a year that ended with three or a year that ended with eight. This is my roll around presentation hive. I would like two people at a time. You first to come up. There's a queen in here and she is Blue. Um, Y'all too, come up. This is, all the bees are in the box. It's been inspected by me a dozen times. The queen is blue, right? Yeah. There's two sides to this thing. The queen can be on either side. There's five frames of bees in this hive and a feeder. That's the queen. Bees are important because they pollinate crops. One third of the food we eat is pollinated by a honeybee. If you want an almond joy, today all the bees have to go to California in the spring to make the almonds. About 85% of the bees in the United States go to California just to pollinate the almond crop. Uh, right now they're coming off of the almonds and they'll go to other crops. There are people that run 10,000 hives from Florida to California just for almond pollination. They used to not have to put food on the hive. Now they put in 10 pounds of pollen substitute per hive just to give the bees nutrition to do their job. Years ago, there was uh, stuff planted along hedgerows and side of the roads that was growing up. Now we want everything mowed and sprayed and looking like, uh, looking like golf courses. We need to let some of those weeds grow and flower out so the bees have a diverse diet. 
when the bees go when the bees go to California for almonds, that's all it is for 100 acres is almonds. Um, and then they go to watermelons and cucumbers and whatever. We're giving them bread and water one day and bread and water a different flavor the next day. Where they don't have a diversity. Right now with the colony collapse, some of it is what we're doing, what we're asking the bees to do. Some of it is the environment that we're putting the bees in. Um, some of it is the pesticides everybody's spraying on the flowers. The bees spraying it back parts per billion. Sooner or later, parts per billion add up to a billion. If I'm a bee and I'm brought up and, and, and I'm raised in a wax environment that absorbs chemicals as the bees go through the air and pick them up and bring them back to the hive, the wax absorbs the chemicals. And if I'm raised up in that wax comb that has the chemicals in it, it's got to affect me somehow, some minute way. If I'm a worker, female worker bee, then I have to go out and work at some point in time, and I have to be able to make it back. If I can't figure out how to find where the home is, then the colony lost a worker. If I'm a male bee and I'm raised in the wax, it might not make me as viral as it used to would have. And if I'm a queen bee raised in the wax, I might not be able to last five to seven years. The longest I've had a queen live is four years, and I mark my queens uh, specifically for time of year that they're mated, when they were made, where they came from, um, and I try to track them. I try not to make queens with anything less than two years of survivability of winter. 